again welcome to this lesson we're doing logarithmic laws and we're up to the fifth law I'm sorry in the last video I said we're doing logarithmic law 3 now I, I lie we're already at the fifth law let's just quickly recap first law said if my interior is 1 for any base then my answer is 0 if my second one if my interior is the same as my base then the answer is 1 then we saw that if we adding two bases with the same base, sorry, two logarithms with same bases, then the interiors of those logarithms may be multiplied. Or in the other direction, if I have a log and a um, base and my interior can be factorized, then I can split up that logarithm into two parts, same bases, um, but with each factor um, uh, gets placed in a different log and the two logs are added together very important and then the last one we saw that if we had a logarithm with an input and from it we subtract this uh, another logarithm with the same base maybe a different input then what I'm allowed to do is divide the interiors and that's it okay or in the other direction if I can write my interior as a fraction then I can break up my logarithm to two parts where they're being subtracted from one another or the logarithm with the denominator gets subtracted from the logarithm with the numerator now we get to logarithmic law 5 logarithmic law 5 I like this one I don't know this, this is just a fun one for me this one says that if I have a logarithm with a base and inside my logarithm I have a power let's call it x to the power of c then the exponent of this logarithm may be sorry the ex, not the exponent of the logarithm the exponent of the interior can become the coefficient of the logarithm with just the base now, a lot of times teachers teach you that this C multiplies to the front. It's not really what happens. It's not what happens at all. This is simply the, 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 what it looks like. It looks like that C multiplies to the front. But why? Why are we allowed to do this? And this is why proofs are so important. A proof is there to assure you that this is true this is true it looks like it's multiplying to the front and you it's even okay if you say that as long as you understand why does it multiply to the front or why does it look like it multiplies to the front so let's look at uh, at this let's first just look at this expression okay if I take log of B with an X in it and I ask him b what exponent must I give you to get x he might say well give me an exponent of n and you would get x okay so if I were to write this in the exponential form we would get well x to the uh, sorry b to the power of x is uh, sorry to the power of n is equal to x b to the power of n is equal to x now what about x to the power of c so if I take x to the power of c what expression will I get well x to the power of c remember x is b to the power of n let me take away these brackets x to the power of c x is equal to b to the power of n so b to the power of n that's x now x gets an exponent of c so we give this one an exponent of c so if we just apply our exponential laws we know that when I have a base or when I have a power with an exponent the two exponents may be multiplied so this becomes b to the power of c times n so let's go and write this now in a logarithmic form this is an exponential form we're going to write it in a logarithmic form we're going to say log base and what is the answer so this is my base so that must be my answer my answer is x to the power of c and now we ask b what exponent must we give you to get x to the power of c 
And it says, well, you must give me an exponent of c times n. But we already have an expression for n. n is equal to log of b, sorry, log b of x. So we can replace n, and now we get exactly what we tried to prove. Log of b, x to the power of c, is equal to c, and now n is log of b times, sorry, of x log b of x. So now you can see we, we were somehow able to rewrite this expression as log b of x and with c in front. And we didn't do it by magic, we did it by logical reasoning. And the wonderful thing about it is now it looks like this c was multiplied to the front. So let's go and do an example of of this applied so let's take log of I don't know x times uh, square root of x let's do that log of x not times I'm sorry okay so here obviously both both ways would probably be um, easy well not easy but but um, one is not more difficult than the other first of all what we would like to do is apply this law I would love to have my base and my input the same if they're the same then it's just one now how can I make that the same well if I can write this as just x to the power of something and that something can multiply to the front please remember it doesn't really multiply to the front according to my law it looks like it multiplies to the front then I'll just have x in here so I can write this as log x now I know that the square root means or something like this means that this one there gets divided by two so my input is actually x to the power of a half and now according to this law I may take this half to the front it may become like this and now X is on its own and now we know well when the input and the interior sorry when the base and the interior is the same the input is the same then the answer is just one so this is a half times and this will just be one so this is just a half okay and there we go so if I have log of 4 equal to 2 notice how this is exactly the same here I've got a base and there I've got the square root of the base here I've got 4 and here I've got the square root of 4 that answer is just a half okay so remember that cool I'll leave it there I uh, hope you enjoyed these logarithmic laws there's one more that we call the changing of bases I'll show you that one in the next video and uh, we'll see you there